Hello world! Imagine a world where the gates to the most prestigious halls of learning swing wide open, inviting everyone inside. No tuition fees, no towering student debts, just pure, unadulterated knowledge available to all. Sounds like a utopian dream, doesn't it? Just a few decades ago, the idea that anyone with an internet connection could access courses from institutions like Harvard and MIT would have seemed laughable. Yet, here we are, living in an age where education is not just a privilege for the few, but a potential treasure trove for the many. I remember stumbling upon MIT's open courseware late one night, eyes bleary from coding. There it was, a repository of course materials from one of the world's leading technical universities, all available for free. It felt like finding a secret library where the world's wisdom was stacked away, waiting to be explored. Back in the early 2000s, a quiet movement began. Universities started to recognize that their mission to advance knowledge didn't have to be confined within ivy-covered walls. MIT took a bold step by launching OpenCourseWare in 2001, publishing nearly all its course content online. This wasn't just a few lectures here and there, it was a comprehensive catalog covering a vast array of subjects. You might be thinking, why would a top to university just give away its price content? Well, the answer isn't straightforward. Part of it was altruism, a genuine desire to democratize education. Another part was strategic, positioning themselves as leaders in a rapidly changing educational landscape. And then there was Harvard. Not to be outdone, Harvard joined the open education movement with initiatives like EDX, a platform co-founded with MIT in 2012. EDX offers massive open Open online courses or MOOCs from premier institutions around the globe. Suddenly, a student in Nairobi or Sao Paulo could enroll in classes taught by luminaries in their field without spending a dime. But let's not forget the grassroots players in this saga. Enter Free Code Camp, a non-profit organization that emerged in 2014 with a mission to make learning to code accessible to anyone willing to put in the time. Founded by Quincy Larson, a former school teacher who saw the barriers aspiring developers face, Free Code Camp offers a full-stack coding curriculum entirely for free. Think about it. In an industry where coding bootcamps can charge upwards of $15,000 for a few months of instruction, Freecode Camp flips the script. It doesn't just teach you to code, it empowers you to build projects, contribute to open source and even gain real-world experience by collaborating on software for nonprofits. Ever heard of the saying, knowledge is power? Well, these initiatives are putting that power directly into the hands of the people. But this revolution hasn't been without its skeptics. Critics argue that free educational resources can't match the depth and rigor of traditional classroom settings. They question the value of courses without formal accreditation or the campus experience. And yes, there is something to be said for late night debates in dorm rooms or the camaraderie of campus life. Yet the success stories keep piling up. Take Maria, for instance, a single mother from a small town who couldn't afford college but dreamed of becoming a software engineer. Through Free Code Camp, she taught herself to code while juggling two jobs. Today, she's a developer at a tech startup, transforming not just her life but also setting an example for her children. Or consider Raj, a young man from India who utilized MIT's open courseware to supplement his local education. He delved into advanced physics courses, igniting a passion that led him to pursue a PhD. His research now contributes to renewable energy solutions, impacting communities far beyond his own. These aren't isolated cases, they are part of a larger tapestry woven from threads of accessibility and opportunity. Opportunity. But what's driving these institutions who shared their knowledge so freely? Part of the answer lies in the changing dynamics of education itself. The internet has disrupted countless industries. Why should education be any different? Traditional universities are grappling with declining enrollment and skyrocketing operational costs. By embracing open education, they are not just hedging against obsolescence, they are expanding their reach and influence. It's a strategic 
pivot in a world where information flows freely and geographical boundaries blur. And then there is the philanthropic angle. Many educators believe that knowledge should be a universal right, not a commodity to be bought and sold. By opening up their curricula, universities fulfill a moral imperative to contribute positively to society. It's an investment in the global intellectual capital, one that could yield innovations we can't even imagine yet. But let's get real for a moment. Access to information doesn't automatically level the playing field. There are still significant hurdles, language barriers, lack of reliable internet access, and the absence of mentorship or guidance that traditional settings provide. Open education is a leap forward, yes, but it's not a panacea for all educational inequalities. Yet, a step in the right direction. The rise of platforms like Coursera, Udemy and Khan Academy further illustrates the appetite for accessible learning. People are hungry for knowledge, eager to upskill, reskill or simply indulge their curiosity. The traditional model of education, a four-year degree followed by a static career, is fading. Lifelong learning is the new norm and open education is at its forefront. But where does this leave the institutions themselves? Some worry that giving away content might devalue the degree they confer. After all, if anyone can access Harvard's courses, what sets their graduates apart? The answer lies in the distinction between knowledge and accreditation. While the information is accessible, the formal recognition of mastery still holds significant weight in the job market. Moreover, the open education movement can serve as a funnel, attracting learners who may eventually enroll in paid programs or pursue advanced degrees. It's a symbiotic relationship. Learners get access to high quality content and institutions expand their influence and potential appeal. Let's talk about the tech industry's role in all this. Companies like Google and IBM are increasingly valuing skills over formal degrees. They have launched their own certification programs, some of which are available on open platforms. The message is clear. If you have the skills, you have a shot. This shift aligns perfectly with what FreeCodeCamp and similar organizations are doing. By providing practical hands-on experience they are equipping learners with portfolios that speak louder than diplomas. Employers take notice when candidates can demonstrate real-world applications of their knowledge but it's not all sunshine and roses. The sheer volume of available courses can be overwhelming. Without their structured path learners may struggle to piece together a coherent educational journey. There's also the issue of motivation. Without the accountability mechanisms of traditional education, grades, deadlines, face-to-face -face interactions, it's easy to fall off the wagon. Yet, communities have sprung up to address these challenges. Online forums, study groups, and mentorship networks offer support and camaraderie. Freakout Camp's community, for example, is renowned for its inclusivity and encouragement. Learners help each other debug code, tackle challenges, and celebrate milestones. It's a virtual village nurturing individual growth. And let's not underestimate the impact of open education on marginalized groups. For many, traditional education is inaccessible due to financial constraints, geographical limitation, or systemic barriers. Open resources provide a pathway to empowerment, enabling individuals to break cycles of poverty and exclusion. It's not just about personal advancement, it's about social justice. So what's the catch? Well, sustainability is a concern. Running these platforms isn't free. They rely on donations, grants or subsidies from partner institutions. There is a delicate balance between keeping content accessible and ensuring the platforms can maintain and update their offerings. Moreover, as more players enter the open education space, the quality of content can vary widely. Without curation or accreditation, learners may find it challenging to discern which resources are credible. This underscores the importance of of trusted institutions like Harvard and MIT participating in the movement, they set benchmarks for quality and rigor. But perhaps the most intriguing aspect is the cultural shift. Education is no longer a static phase of life, but an ongoing journey. The lines between teacher and learner blur as knowledge becomes a shared resource. In forums and collaborative projects, experts and novices alike 
contribute, learn, grow together. Isn't that a revolution in itself? On the grand scheme of things, open education initiatives are reshaping how we think about learning. They are breaking down barriers, fostering innovation and democratizing access to knowledge. While challenges remain, the momentum is undeniable. And so the story continues. Open education is not a finished chapter, but an unfolding narrative. It invites us all to participate, to learn, to question and to contribute. Whether you are an aspiring developer, a curious mind or a seasoned professional looking to upskill, the doors are open. The revolution isn't just being televised, it's being learned one course time. If you have enjoyed watching this video, you'll surely love the next one. Make sure to watch it too. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a bite.